Top Tree Striker Titan, otherwise known as Code of the Earthshaker, is, I believe, the first Titan subclass that I really took to. Again, I'm a Warlock main. Never main Titan. I've had a love-hate relationship with it. But uh, this is one of the one of two trees that I actually really enjoy. The other one I did a video on recently about Bottom Tree Solar. That is my favorite. But this, when I can get away with this, I absolutely have so much fun with this. This is a great build that's going to give you a lot of super energy. And it's just smashy, smashy. Just punch things. I mean, if this isn't a Titan build, then I don't know what it is. So, Code of the Earth Shaker. This centers around one thing. And this is the reason why I picked this. Seismic Strike. After sprinting for a short time, use this melee ability to slam shoulder first into your target and release an arc explosion on impact. Guys, I love explosions. Like this video is done. This is, this is all you need right here. Seismic Strike. But what if you whiff your melee and you don't get your ability back and you're using the right exotic, which we'll get into later, but... With that exotic, if you uh, if you do whip the melee, you have to wait for that melee. How do you fix that? Well, this video will help you with those little problems. So let's go over the rest of Earthshaker, and then we'll get on with the build. After shocks, damaging enemies with Seismic Strike, which is your melee, recharges your grenade. Okay, I'm really liking this. So we could potentially have unlimited melees, and the melees feed our grenades, which put us on the path to just having tons of grenades. And we use grenades to get supers. And I do believe we could also use melees to get supers. Okay, hold on, there's more. Terminal Velocity, Fist of Havoc, which is your super. The ground slam attack leaves a damage dealing field in its wake and deals more damage the longer it's in the air. And then finally, Magnitude, get an additional grenade charge. Okay. This, this I do love, too. You get two grenades, basically. Two grenades instead of one. This also increases the duration of grenade effects. This is a pretty powerful tree right here. All right, Fists of Havoc. Supercharge your fists and slam the ground with the force of a maelstrom. Heck yeah. These are all... Uh, this is a matter of opinion. Uh, whatever. Pick the grenades you want. Uh, if you check the solar build video, you know that I, I like Towering Barricade. Uh, there's really no reason to use Rally Barricade anymore in this. With my builds, I, I typically don't need to use my barricades quite so much because they do center so much on healing, self-healing. So Towering Barricade is nice, and I, I think I use this more for getting back grenade energy than, and you'll learn how, uh, than I do for actual protection. Or if I need to just sit and wait for something, I'll, I'll pop this up. I like Pulse Grenade with Top Tree Arc. Uh, it just... The grenade lasts forever, and those pulses do a lot of damage. And this will really help you with getting your super back. It also helps with zoning areas, so this is kind of fun in uh, PvP, too. A lot of people, I believe, like Catapult Lift. For me, being a Warlock main, I like Strafe Lift. This just gives me strong directional control. This is non-negotiable for me. I know my Titan friends use other jumps. Use what's comfortable for you, but I, I need to have a little bit of control. This... This has about the same control as the worst Warlock jump. With this being more of a melee build, uh, especially with using Striking Light on the chest armor, you could switch to Crown Splitter and do the shotgun. Actually, you know what? Let's do that. Let's, we might as well. We'll put our Sunshot <laughs> I'm such a simp for Sunshot. <laughs> All right. This is definitely a close range build. So Crown Splitter, Sunshot, and Reese Walker. <laughs> pick pick whatever shotgun you want. If you're blessed enough to have this one, go for it. It's amazing. And you probably, I know a lot of people are going to be like, what's your role, Die Bear? Well, I have Full Choke, Assault Mag, Surplus, and Vorpal. This thing's amazing. It does one-shot people in Crucible. Yes, it does. I On, a, on another note, side note, I had one with Accurize. Someone was like, well, I wonder how that rolls with Accurize. And I took it in, and it did not one-shot people. So there you go. An insurmountable Skulfer is the exotic that this build centers around. Transfusion Matrix kills with arc melee abilities, trigger health regeneration, and restore melee energy. Meaning, if you get the charged melee kill, 
you get your melee back. It is stupid. And this is why people used to complain about it in PvP. So normally I use a solar helmet for ashes to assets because grenade kills give you super energy. Well, there's also a melee version of this. And since this is a punchy, punchy build, uh, I was very happy to find hands on. So again, this is only on um, arc helmets. So you gain bonus super energy on melee kills. Heck yeah, let's do it. I would normally double up if I had space for this build. I don't. I could take Resilience Mod off. That's three points to make room for another hands-on, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'd rather have the Resilience in my case for my playstyle. And since Ashes to Assets is a turquoise mod this season, meaning you can get it from the artifact, the seasonal artifact, this is at a reduced energy cost. So instead of three points, it's one point. And since it's a turquoise mod, you can put it on any helmet, not just solar. So I'm taking advantage of this. So melee kills give me super energy and grenade kills give me super energy. I don't use elemental well mods very much. They're just not as good as, as the charge with light mods. But when I looked at this build and what I would be doing with it, I felt that the elemental well mods would be more appropriate because I'm not shooting anything to make orbs of light and taking charge is the best mod for for charge with light mods or for charge with light builds but it's it's so easy to make well mods and with the the super charge rate of all of your abilities on this build i figured the elemental well mods would be good enough for helping to top off those abilities so with elemental ordinance defeating a combatant with a grenade spawns an elemental well that matches your subclass energy type so we're using arc and we will be making arc wells and we'll be using grenades so we're making wells so this basically means that with with our arc grenade kills we will get arc wells and when we pick up those arc wells we will have energy granted to the ability with the lowest current energy Now I am using one charge with light mod, so I popped taking charge on here. And if we, again, always use masterworked weapons. So after a couple kills, you'll drop an orb, you'll pick it up. That orb will give you one stack of charge with light. So if you pick up four orbs and you have supercharged on your armor, you'll get four stacks. But I believe you typically get like two stacks with no addition, with no mods that actually give you more stacks. So without using charged up or supercharged, you can get two stacks of charge with light mods by picking up two orbs. Momentum transfer causing damage with a grenade reduces your melee cooldown. So remember that example I gave you where if you whiff your melee and you lose your charge? Well, instead of waiting forever to get that charge back, you can throw a grenade and damage. You don't have to kill anything, just damage it, and it gives you back uh, your melee charge. Not completely. I mean, the more damage you do, the more melee charge you get. These do stack, so I have two on here. For the chest armor, we are using Concussive Dampener and Sniper Damage Resistance. These are just standard mods. Uh, I use these or some variation thereof for every build. They're one point. You, you're going to have room on your chest armor to put these on here. It, it, well, it's highly likely. Or if you need to use like a five point armor mod over here, then, then these won't matter quite so much. For harder content, I do like to use Sniper Damage Resistance and then something here, either Melee or Concussive Dampener, depending on the activity I'm going into. This, this is a mod that you can swap. Um, this is the only Charge with Light mod that I'm using on this build because we're, we're simply not using Charge with Light mods to uh, charge any abilities. Now, what we could do is remove these and put Heavy Handed on. So when you're Charged with Light, you can regain half of your melee energy when you use a Charged Melee ability. However, I wanted to switch it up a little bit. I wanted to use a mod that I don't normally use. One of our options, if you're playing by yourself, it may be better to use Lucent Blade. I don't know, it really depends on your situation. So if you're using a sword, pop on Lucent Blade. So while charged with light dealing damage with a sword gives you bonus sword damage for five seconds, consuming only one stack of charge with light. This greatly increases the charge rate of your equipped sword. This mod's secondary perk is active when at least one other arc mod is socketed into this armor. So, as you can see, that little blue line greatly increases the charge rate for your equipped swords is 
it's kind of grayed out. If we put on arc resistance, you'll see now that it's bright. That means that that blue, that blue ability or that blue perk is now active. So, well, we were actually looking, well, we were actually looking at, at Loose and Blade here. But I'm glad we noticed that because I chose to use Striking Light for this while Charge with Light defeating combatants with melee damage and Sword spawns one orb of power for your allies and consumes one stack of Charge with Light. Absolutely use this when you're in a team. If you're not using a sword and you're using this build, if what you're going to be doing is running towards things and charging them, do this. Like, we're mailing our hearts out here. We might as well spawn an orb of power for our friends. But if you're playing alone, why would you use this? Well, I'm going to use this playing alone because I can gain damage resistance against combatants while sprinting. So I'm actually using that additional perk, that secondary perk, that is now active because I put an arc resistance mod or, or an arc mod. You can see that there's blue around the mod, which means it's it's an arc mod. However, it's, it's dependent on your situation. And I know for a fact that I will swap between these three mods depending on what's happening. If, if I'm doing something like boss damage where I actually need Lucent Blade, and face it, if you're in patrol zones, eh, you don't really need Lucent Blade. If you're not doing most of your boss DPS with your sword and a strike, you're not really going to need Lucent Blade. You could for fun. Um, the other one I see myself using a lot of maybe is Heavy Handed, but with the way this build is, we're already getting melee charges like crazy. What's cool, though, is while surrounded by multiple combatants, defeating a combatant with a fusion rifle shotgun, which is what we're using, sidearm or SMG, adds ammo for that weapon to your reserves. So this also, you might want to switch to heavy-handed simply because you're using a shotgun. I don't know. But if you're not using any of these weapons, you're not going to get a benefit from that secondary perk. Again, it's situational. But like I said, we're going with striking light because I actually want the damage resistance while sprinting because of the melee that we're going to be using. Now, legs have pretty much turned into the healing and support uh, armor for my builds. On the solar legs, you get a mod that will automatically heal you up on picking up an orb of power. We're not using those right now. Instead, we're using Better Already, which will begin regenerating your health after picking up an Orb of Power. So if you pick up the Orb and you get shot, that will stop the regeneration. That is the only downfall to this, but, but you can still heal with this build. Absolution reduces all ability cooldowns each time you pick up an Orb of Power. This is incredibly useful, and yes, it is available on the other... Uh, it's available on Solar Legs and I'm sure Arc Legs as well. Elemental Charge. Honestly, guys, you don't need to use Void Legs here. I am probably, because I happen to have some Masterwork Void Legs, whose stats fit nicely with my build. That may be why I'm using these. Also, if I use Solar, I'm probably using Charge with Light, or I'm using Super Charge, which, take, which takes five spots. So I wouldn't have room for recovery for a, a four point recovery mod if I was using supercharge, which is which is five points. Um, another thing is while I have all the different energy types masterworked, they are shared among other builds. So I won't necessarily, I don't, I don't, I don't want to change my mods every time I change loadouts. So I do have set loadouts and if I'm using something for another loadout, I'm not going to make changes to it for this loadout. So either I use what I've already used for that other loadout or I get new legs. And that's probably why I'm using void legs here. But again, you could just, I mean, if you really wanted to, hold on. You, you could go with solar legs too, easily. As, as you can see, uh, elemental charges here. You can get this on these two. So let's take a look at elemental charge. Become charged with light by picking up an elemental well. If the elemental well's element type matches your subclass element, you gain two stacks of charged with light. So we already have well making mods on other armor pieces and we are gonna be picking them up and I figured why not? Let's, since with striking light, we'll be dropping orbs for people who we aren't playing with right now. <laughs> 
uh, and it'll be using a stack. We can keep feeding those stacks by becoming charge of light with uh, with elemental wells as well. Since we're making arc wells, this mod will give us two stacks of charge with light for picking up those wells. And as always, picking up a well will grant energy to your lowest charged ability. My Titan Mark, uh, again, I typically use solar class items because I like Bomber. I'm not a huge fan of some of the alternatives. Since we're using a Sunshot and a Sword, Energy Accelerant is, well, we're playing with that this season. This is a seasonal mod. If this went away and there wasn't another one to replace it with, I would probably just put Double Bomber on. So whenever I put my shield down, I'd get that much more grenade energy, probably about 40%. Font of Wisdom is an elemental well mod that will grant a temporary significant increase in your intellect, improving the recharge rate of your super. Now, quick quick note about uh, the general armor mods, like do you use recov, whatever, that's up to you. You need to figure out what you want on these. I typically like to pad the stats in the middle. This is a really good armor set. Like I'm very happy with the stat distribution on these. I like to run higher resilience, uh, 70 at a minimum, because I found that a lot of things one-shot me below 70, both in PvP and PvE. And there's a lot of awesome content creators out there who have actually sat down and demonstrated on their YouTube videos exactly what resilience does, and it's convincing. If you know what it does, it is convincing. In a lot of raids, uh, people who are dying all the time, I had them raise their resilience up to at least 70 and they stopped dying all the time. It really does make a difference. Resilience is, for most people, going to be a great stat. Some people get away with running low resilience. They're just god tier players who, I don't know how they do it. I am not a god tier player. But for the average player, this can make a huge difference. And if you're not a Titan main and you die a lot, you may want to consider upping this resilience. Recub is always useful. I I typically do recub as a secondary stat, so I try to get it up to like 60. 70 is really nice. 80 is really, wow, this is just, this is lucky on this build. Now, I think one of the reasons why I chose to go with recovery, a high recub on here, is because normally on my Titan builds, I use heal thyself, but we're not using that today. Uh, and man, this could be so good on this build though. While you are charged with light, grenade final blows heal you and consume one stack of charge with light. If you're dying a lot, I recommend switching off of the elemental well mod and going to heal thyself. But hopefully that won't be a problem. Again, a lot of this is dependent on you, your play style, and the situation you're putting yourself into. The general armor mods that you put on each individual piece really depends on your stat rolls. The stat rolls that you get on each piece right here, this is 100% RNG. Uh, the only exception is if you have the season content and you can do focused engrams, which take a lot of grinding to get the currency that allows you to do that. And my only issue with focused engrams is that they may give me the high stat that I want, but then I usually sacrifice in like my secondary stat. So if I go with a high resilience piece it's probably going to give me super low recov and and i'm not not really down with that I'd, I'd rather have both of those higher uh but once you've gotten your gear and you've put them all together to see what you get in this column look at this column and see what you what you want to make higher if you have like 30 res or if you have 30 recov you'll know that you want to put some recov mods on your armor if you have a 30 resilience and a 30 recov you might just want to keep farming for armor but the, the general armor mods right here in the first column on each piece really depends on your RNG and what armor you're using for this build. Brain Vault Sigma Actium 9 Cranial Dreadnought Invincible Type. An insurmountable skull fort. Hello. We understand you require real-time combat instructives. This is a Brain Vault Sigma Actium 10 Cranial Dreadnought Invictus type. It is a fortress for your skull. Your skull is now a mighty bastion. You can break anything with your skull. The only limit is your spine. Relax. The lights will speak for you. Your hands are your eyes now. Look around. 
you find hand-to-hand -hand combat relaxing. The lights will attract the enemy. Help them to relax as well. You will feel the effect of a Caregraver Gamma Lysander 4 Health Enforcer Frontline Variant. Your enemies do not have a Skull Fortress. Their skulls are like meadows. Play in the meadows. Gather the flowers from the meadows. Gather them with electrokinetic trauma. Smell the flowers. Isn't that nice? You are safe in your Skull Fort. <laughs>